what's going on, my friends? It's your boy, Dave Sharp. Welcome to another episode of Wake Up Legendary. And we have yet another amazing couple, not just one guest. We got the privilege to have two this morning. So please help me welcome to the show, Eddie and Jamie. Hey, y'all. Hello. Hi. Where are you guys calling in from? Dallas, Texas area. That's why I said y'all from one yes. forty to another. We kind of figured. <laughs> How y'all doing? We're good. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, so, um, what what led you all to um, finding Legendary Marketer? Were you actually looking for something, or or did you uh, did you unintentionally stumble upon us and realize this was what you weren't looking for, but you were glad you found it? Um, I would say. Aimlessly scrolling through TikTok, we weren't looking for it. Um, we have went through kind of a, a hard time, something that we were um, going to be transitioning from and um, just kind of getting lost in a scroll and you stumble upon videos and, um, it, you know, you just take the step and <laughs> that was the Hail Mary. Yeah. Eddie, uh, what's your side of the story? So... Um, <laughs> We, I, I owned a business with someone and it was going good for about six years. Um, and then things started not going so good. And then um, we were deciding to part ways and some financial stuff and found out that my partner had been basically embezzling money since 2020. And um, so we were having to walk away from that and we were needing to replace the income. And so Jamie did find it kind of just scrolling, but we were definitely on the looks for something to help us replace that income. And um, she brought it to me and I'm like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were, you had it out to the, you know, to the universe. There was mm -hmm. the intention there that yeah. you all needed something you were in need of, you know, out of, I'm sorry you went through that. I mean, that sounds like a, a difficult thing. Talk to everybody about being an entrepreneur and overcoming something so big. We, we see throughout our community, people, you know, overcoming their first entrepreneurial challenges like, oh my gosh, my video first video didn't get any views or my 20th video didn't get any views. But you guys, um, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big challenge that you went through. Talk to us about how that, how that affected you. And uh, I mean, how did you, how did you push through that when it was happening from an entrepreneur standpoint? Well, you know, I, part of the reason I think a lot of people want to be an entrepreneur is to be in the know of what's going on with, with their income, you know, um, and, you know, working for a company, you never know what's going on financially most of the time. Well, with this, I put a lot of trust in my business partner on the financial side, you know, and I, I, I believe everything happens for a reason. Um, I don't regret putting that trust in my partner. Um, I kind of go off the motto of trust everybody until they give you a reason not to trust them. So now I have a reason not to trust that person. Um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I was having to spend, you know, all my nights during the week at that business till nine o'clock. I was having to work weekends. So uh, I was not getting to see my kids at night, not helping with homework, not being able to put them to bed. Um, they would go do stuff on the weekends and I would have to be at work. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. It, it hurt financially for a while. But um now i get to be there with the kids at night you know i'll pick them up i spin them around throw them in bed you know when i go to put them to bed now and when we go to do stuff on the weekends i'm there so it, it's everything happens for a reason and we're making right. it a positive jamie what did you learn from that situation from your perspective that was hard <laughs> so hard um definitely lots of emotions lots of anger um but once we came across this, I felt like we saw light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and 
it, it was a Hail Mary. It was, let's do it. We felt it. Everything felt right with it. And we both have been able to create our income for so long, for the most part, um, since we've been together almost 20 years. It For us, we knew that we would be putting in work. Um, we would have to learn lots of new stuff, lots of new skills. And we were ready for it. I mean, we were okay. And we are still learning every day. Mm. I think it was less challenging for us because we knew we were doing it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a great, this is a great <clears throat> story of entrepreneurship period. I mean, yeah. we, when we sign up for this game and I say game, not because to minimize the, the events that could happen or the work that it's going to take, but you win some and you lose some. Right. Yeah. And I think that once you really embrace that, as you all have clearly it, you take the good with the bad and you try to take the lessons in the teachable moments or the, as you said, turn the negatives into a positive. Um, so as you are starting this, talk to us about what that initial conversation looked like when um, you brought it, Jamie, to Eddie, because you had found it, you were scrolling. That's okay. We all scroll. We get it. <laughs> That's what we do now, right? As human <laughs> beings, we've, we've all got a, a small case of scroliosis multiple times throughout the day. So talk to us about how that conversation happened and what were the what did the next day or two or that week look like? I think we normally um, we sit in our front room office area every morning and most of the time we whenever it's like five, six o'clock, this is the room that we're at. We're catching up for the day, business bills. Um, what is our next step? What do we need to focus on? It's kind of like our our game plan room, I guess you want to say. Mm. Um, and I just told him, Hey, I, I signed up for this course. Um, do you want to take it with me? And at first he was like, what course, what are you talking about? And I explained it to him, showed it to him. And, um, he listened what to the first day. Yeah. And that was, that was it. He was, he was ready. And, you know, I, I love doing video stuff. I've been on TikTok for a long time with my other business. And actually, I still also own an architectural business. Um, so I've been on social media a long time. And, you know, I've heard of affiliate marketing, but I haven't ever really seen Legendary or anything like that. Um, but when she was like, you know, brought this, I'm like, man, making uh, income, for, you know, passively and doing videos and stuff like that was, I'm, I love that. Like mm. I was all in on that. Yeah. Are you pretty amazed by the, the idea that they're everybody, like the playing field is leveled. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have mm -hmm. a, a contractor's license. You don't yeah. have to have any of those things, which makes, uh, we need to be on the lookout for people that have don't have our best intentions in mind because there really is no barrier to entry. But on the other side, the the potential is unlimited for somebody if they have what? How would you finish that sentence? Determination and drive, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, and the willing willingness to learn, mm -hmm. you know, mm. and that's that's one thing we like is about it is just it's always evolving. There's always something else you can learn. You, you never really, okay, plateau, you know, if you do, I mean, you probably should Move go on. online and try and find, you know, you can learn, you just got to find someone else to follow that inspires mm -hmm. you, you know, um, you inspire us a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, at what you've done with this is amazing. Um, we, we really appreciate it. Well, hey, man, it's my pleasure. And it sounds like, you know, we've got a lot in common, even though we live in different states and have had different challenges along the way. One of the things that I've realized along the way is that our challenges really are who we are. Yeah. Our challenges and what we what we are overcoming, how we overcome things, our attitude as we go through it, the perspective mm -hmm. that we choose to have. I mean, it's you guys could so easily be choosing the victim stance right now or mm -hmm. back when that happened. Right. Yeah. So easy. It's such a choice. I see it every day. Mm -hmm. 
People choose victim stance instead of being the victor in their life and, mm -hmm. and trying to become victorious over their struggles. Um, mm -hmm. What's it been like for you guys, specifically you, Jamie, to um, use some of these video, you know, get on video, kind of put your talk to us a little bit about the roles that you two are playing now within your business and how you guys are balancing each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, well, I think in the beginning, we were both um, doing the videos half and half throughout the day, um, just scheduled different times. And I feel like now we he's doing most of the videos. I've like yesterday, I had to fill in for a video. So I got one up. Not a big deal. We both know how to do all the tasks and all the roles, but I feel like he's so much better at the videos. And as far as the back end, um, online emails, setting up the funnels, I know that inside and out and backwards now. So that's where I feel like I um, am at my strongest. So nice, nice. I, I come from a cheer background, and so I'm okay with being in front of people. And kind of like you were saying with the losses and stuff, but, you know, I've been through some losses with coaching teams and stuff, and I always tell my teams, you you learn the most from the losses. You don't you, – you, the wins are great, but you don't really learn much from the wins, you know. It's always the losses that you really learn the most. So we took this loss as a big learning opportunity – you know, and that's where we're at. And we've learned a lot. You know, um, I definitely will still trust other people. It, it, I, I'm not going to change that, um, but it is what it is. And, you know, that's we're kind of yin and yang here, you know. So but it does definitely help being able to have two people to, you know, we try to do the three to five videos a day. You know, and I know a lot of people, oh, I'm stuck at 200 views. Oh, I'm stuck at 200 views. Well, you're stuck at 200 views if you only do one video. If you're getting 200 views a video, put up five videos, <laughs> you know, yeah. work the algorithm, you know. You just turn that 200 into 1,000, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I picked up something that you said, Jamie. You said, I'm, I've got this all down pat now. Mm -hmm. the funnels, the back end. Can you talk to us about the learning curve and where you were at so everybody understands that you weren't just born like, I mean, maybe you, Maybelline, maybe she was born with it. I don't know. No. Can you talk to us about how you have become knowing it like the back of your hand? Talk to us about that process. Hours. I have spent hours online looking up YouTube videos um, trying to figure it out for myself, um, finding the right videos, the right people to follow, testing it out. I've done so many tests with emails and funnels and setting up the system. Well, and the blueprints definitely help because that we you did once we went through the blueprints, found out there was a few there things were that still had to tweak, yeah. things that I had to go in and make happen. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I've spent hours <laughs> yeah. learning. One day we're rocking and rolling, and then next day she's like, oh, babe, the emails aren't working. Yeah. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You'll down. figure it out, or if, if you need help, I'll help you. But for yeah. the most part, I stepped back and let her do it because she was kind of the one leading that part. So, Yeah, yeah. Well, I've I, – and I must admit that there's never been a single course or a single guru – that has been the answer to all of my question <laughs> problems. And so I think that being flexible, if you yeah. buy a course, being willing to actually go through it, you wouldn't believe how many people come and take our 15 day challenge, for example, or even invest in the blueprints and then mm -hmm. are like, okay, I've invested. And it's like, you know, <laughs> where's the money? They they, you know, they hit the easy button. No, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it really is, an ever evolving and never ending learning process mm -hmm. of putting pieces together and being willing to dig deeper. Now we've got all these tools, not only Google, not only YouTube, not only, you know, courses and Facebook groups and live coaching and kind of all these things that are available to us. And all those things are obviously available right here in legendary, but there's mm -hmm. also artificial intelligence and there's all these mm -hmm. other resources that we can ask and utilize we actually nowadays have 
too many answers at our fingertips. <laughs> you know, it's almost it's almost when, when people say information overload, what, what it is, is it's complacency due to too many solutions <laughs> right at our fingertips. And people yeah. just, you know, it's like, don't know. And it's like, that's why I say ignorance on fire is one of the best things that you can have at the beginning, <laughs> because you, you don't know, you're just on fire <laughs> looking for answers and solutions. And, and it's never, ever going to hurt you to go in, you know, watch something or Google something or ask chat GPT or show up to a live coaching call. I've never, you know, done research or tried to learn something in my business and not walked away with so learning something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so what advice do you give people out there besides the make five idiot, you know, but you know, multiply your views by just making more videos. What, what, what other, um, you know, advice do you give people on the regular who are, um, you know, finding themselves stuck or struggling, which I kind of find people somewhat addicted to struggling, you know, mm -hmm. and, and kind of defaulting into that. How do you encourage people and what other things do you tell people when they say, Hey, I'm stuck. I would suggest um, looking at people that have been there, done that. You know, if you've been watching this person or that person, try watching someone else because you relate to other people differently, you know. And if you've, you know, been trying, you know, to mimic someone, you know, and it's not working for you, well, there, there might be someone else that is more like you that if you kind of tweak your videos and do more what they're doing, that might help you better. You know, not copy, but of course, just, you know, mimic, you know, yeah, mimic, but more. also invest in yourself in the education because, you know, just like, you know, when I coach cheerleading, I can coach a tumbling class that has 10 kids in it. But when we do private lessons, you know, they'll learn in 30 minutes, one on one, what they'll learn in a class in a month mm -hmm. because it's one on one. So, you know, that you get what you pay for, you know, so private lessons, you pay more for, than you do for a class. Mm -hmm. Same with education. You know, if you pay for the $7 course, you're going to get, you know, a lot of, you actually you get way more information for that course than what most I people what think, you know, but, you know, so invest more in education as you go, you know, mm -hmm. as you start making money, reinvest it in more education for uh, your business, affiliate marketing, you know, get a mentor when you can. Mm -hmm. Jamie, what are the common, you know, characteristics or patterns that you see with people who say that they're struggling? What are some of the common things that you, they, they tend to have in common out there? I feel like they're not looking for the answer to go past that roadblock or make it to the top of that mountain. They don't understand that in life, you know, there's always going to be mountains just because you peak one and you make it over doesn't mean that there's not going to be any more. The more you grow, the more mountains it doesn't stop. I mean, it's just evolution. It's life. Mm. So it's sort of this expectation that once mm -hmm. I overcome one, whether it be a molehill or a mountain, or it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a molehill that I'm turning into a mountain, whatever yes. it is, once I overcome that one challenge that it should be smooth sailing from mm -hmm. there and people get frustrated that there's another molehill or another mm -hmm. mountain on the other mm -hmm. side of that same challenge that they just overcame. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 And, and entrepreneurship is really, really full of those, as we said before. Mm -hmm. um, this is when you meet yourself. This is when you learn about yourself. This mm -hmm. is when you develop the muscles that we all need to be successful is in the challenging times. Eddie, I like what you said about you don't learn anything when you're succeeding. And I find that to be relatively true because success oftentimes breeds complacency, right? Mm -hmm. And the more successful we get, the more there's a tendency to forget where we came from. Right? Yeah. And I've yeah. seen that happen in my own life. I mean, the more, the further I get away from being so broke, I couldn't afford to pay attention, the harder it is for me to remember what that was like. And I need to put myself in situations. It's one of the reasons why I do this show. It's one of the reasons why this show is, I was only going to do this through the pandemic, right? Just to kind of <laughs> show people that, Hey, we're not going anywhere. 
But I realized that this is one of the best ways for me personally to stay connected to people who are just getting started, to mm -hmm. um, beginner stories, to what it's like to overcome things at the very beginning, because that's that that's who I need to stay close to, because those are primarily my main customers are, are not mm -hmm. people who are already super successful, right? Yeah. It's people who are just getting started. So I got to ask myself on a daily basis, how am I staying connected to those beginners or those people at the very, you know, at the beginning of their journey so I can still relate to them? I think oftentimes we're so in a rush to get away from, you know, mm -hmm. whatever we feel. And it's sort of the grass is greener on the other side. It's just artificial mm -hmm. turf when we get there syndrome, right? Yeah. Um, so how do you guys, even though you're having success, what what is a priority for you? Take talk us through your daily routine. Even though you're having some success, even though you're you, you know, talk us through your mindset of staying close to you know your primary customer. First of all, who is your target customer? Who how did you pick your niche, and how did you decide to to market to the people that you're marketing to? I would say our niche is couples and you know parents. You know, um, I'm, a lot of uh, the affiliates are, you know, stay at home moms. But I think we are more, you know, m the husband and wife, mm -hmm. you know, because um, there's been so much throughout the years where, you know, I, I was away, you know, because I was working two businesses, you know. Um, so it's kind of trying to help couples, you know, free up their time to be a couple and be with each other, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, after you, you know, get married and you have kids and you have jobs and you, you start spending less and less time together mm -hmm. when the two people that met is what started it all. And you enjoyed seeing each other. So I think we we try to focus on the couples that want to just have more couple time and more family time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With financial freedom. You know, yeah. this is what it provides them. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And it's helping the person that you used to be, right? Even if mm -hmm. you used to be that person yesterday, right? Yeah. I yeah. think that we feel when we're getting started that we need to have a certain amount of success or mm -hmm. be at a certain place in order to then have the authority or the, you know, the, the, the right to mm -hmm. talk to people. Um, how did you find, how did you give yourself permission, even at the beginning when you didn't have success, when nobody knew you, when you were just getting started to begin talking to those people? I think our beginning video started out how to um, make money to pay off debt, uh, create more financial freedom, um, be able to do activities, take your kids to the park or I mean, wherever we would go or um, what are some more videos that we did? Well, um, we, we and then we gradually got into the more educational part of it and started uh, talking more, uh, just talking versus, you know, versus the seven second clips or something like that. We started doing more long form. Okay. Um, and, and honestly, we still try to mix it up. Um, but like you you know, valuetainment. So we're like, what can we do for, you know, the videos that we're not trying to sell anything. So mm -hmm. I've started doing these nine to fiver videos and they're kind of my fun, you know, little skits or whatever about nine to fivers and how they act and stuff like that. Um, and I've kind of started a series with that, you know, so, yeah. you know, cer certain people follow us from those and certain people follow us from Jamie's videos. And, you know, every we kind of we have about three little different, you know, types that we do. Okay. And we get different types of people kind of from each video that we do. Nice. Nice. I love that. And so you're finding some traction with humor, with entertainment. Yeah. Not yeah, just educate. I mean, you mentioned edu ed, uh, uh, you said value tainment, edutainment, pretty much the same thing. You, yeah. you mentioned education. You mentioned entertainment. When did you start to kind of loosen up enough to start, you know, being more of yourself? I mean, look, we're, you know, we're all a little bit, we're all a little bit frozen when we first start. We mm -hmm. kind of we get on video and we think that we need to like, you know, we put on our our whatever we call that our. Um, 
our professional face, our best foot forward, whoever we think yeah. people want us to be, or, you know, we, we want to make that first, you know, that good first impression. How did you begin to feel comfortable enough? Was it something that happened? Did you start off like that? Or when did you really loosen up and give yourself permission to start having a little bit of fun with it? Well, I would say at first, um, you know, I, we I didn't do any videos like that because I thought, well, we need to look more professional or whatever, you know. And I had my personal page where I would do these little skits or whatever, you know, lip lip sync stuff, you know. And I, I really just for whatever reason I enjoy doing those. And I'm like, well, how can I relate that to affiliate marketing, you know, so that every video we put up isn't trying to pitch something or selling something. And I was like, well, uh, you know, nine to fivers, you know, I mean, the, you know, a lot of them are bitter, you know, and there's those little skits, you know, where like, you don't want to go in and the one I did yesterday is when your boss, you know, ask you a question is like, don't be sarcastic. Don't be sarcastic. Don't be sarcastic. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just whatever, you know? So I, I always enjoyed doing it. And so I tried to relate it to, you know, our market. So I think you said something real key there. Um, uh, you said um, that, you know, you, uh, well, you were talking, I can't remember exactly what you said, but um, you just, you, what I heard was you were having fun doing something over on your personal page and you enjoyed doing that. You were having mm -hmm. fun with it, right? That was mm -hmm. the first thing that I heard that was important. And how can I, how can I transfer that over or translate that over into this niche? What we find is content that works in one place usually works in another, right? Yeah. It's not, yeah. I think a lot of us overcomplicate it and overthink it too much. Um, the second really, really important thing that I heard you just say was that I had to find something and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but I had to find something where I wasn't pitching in every video. Mm -hmm. Can you say more about that? Well, because we, that, uh, you go back and look at our videos. The first ones were like, hit our link, copy our link, copy our link, <laughs> you know, cause we thought, Hey, that's, that's what we got to do, you know? And then the more we were watching other people, the more we watched wake up legendary and stuff the more we started noticing the people that are being successful, they're like, don't pitch every time. Don't sell every time. And I'm like, Oh, I think we're, we're, we're kind of pitching every time, <laughs> you know? So that was kind of our aha moment. Like, Hey, we, we need to mix it up, you know? Mm. So, yeah. And we, and we were like, well, you know, that makes sense because, you know, we don't like it when someone's always pitching us, you mm. know? So, <laughs> well, look at TV, right? I mean, how we're all now to a place and we didn't like commercials before. Okay. Mm -hmm. We didn't like commercials back when we had no way around them. But mm -hmm. nowadays, since yeah. there's YouTube premium and there's all these streaming services that you're paying with no commercials, right? Cause you pay the fee that yeah. covers mm -hmm. their cost. That's their, pro the reason why, I mean, in TVs kind of, they make you pay plus they give you commercials. We, we realized yeah. how, how screwed we were getting there before, but <laughs> we never liked commercials. So, I mean, how many families did, did you, did some of you grow up in yeah. where, 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 you know, you'd pa you'd mute it going through the commercials yeah. or you'd get up and, you know, have a family break or even now to this day, if you're watching cable TV, it's like, okay, commercials are on, but you know, what's interesting. The commercials still sell, right? That's even right. though, even though we don't want to watch them, they still plant <laughs> a little seed. So it's, yeah. there's gotta be some sort of, you know, there's got to be some sort of system that you have set up where you're, 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 you're um, moving people into your funnel or you're taking mm -hmm. people from, you know, passive watchers to active um, leads where they're engaged and they're interested. One of the reasons why I'm not constantly pitching on the show is because I've realized that number one, if you have a good marketing and sales system behind you, Mm -hmm. right? That's working. You have a funnel that if you provide enough value and you make it obvious where the next step is like on Instagram, on TikTok, it's obvious what the next step is. And you can even write it in your bio. 
click the link for my free value, whatever you're giving away for free. Mm -hmm. And if people like your content enough, because you're providing enough edutainment in the content, they will seek that out. You won't have to constantly pitch and give calls to action and every video does. And it's one of the reasons why I don't do that on this show. And it's one of the reasons why we have, you know, four, five, six hundred people on this show every single day because it's nonstop, nothing but value. And then when you get off the show, it's like, holy shit. You know, yeah. let me go back into the course. Let me go in here and right. You're seeding things. It's more powerful when you're seeding things and people hear you talking about something in, in a more passive, less desperate way. They become more curious. I call it when you're leaning in, other people are kind of like, Whoa, yeah. right? but when you're just chilling and you don't need them, you don't need yeah. them to buy. You don't need them to do anything. You're just, you're cool if they're there watching, just taking in value. They will lean in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. that's a metaphor for kind of how the, the process works, at least from my perspective over the last 12 years or so, is that the more value you provide, the, the, the less focused you are on pitching and trying yeah. to get them to buy something in every video and making sure they know where the link, folks, they know where the link is. Yes. Mm -hmm. They know what they spend eight hours a day on these apps. Yeah. It's a full time job for them. They know how to work these apps better than they know how to work their dishwasher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For you sure. Know, the reason why they're not buying and clicking is because they've not seen anything that's valuable enough for them to take the next step. They don't want more of what mm -hmm. you're giving. That's that's a hard pill to swallow, but once you just say it out loud and admit it to yourself, it's like, oh, okay, okay, let me let me try something different. You know, mm -hmm. let me let me take a different angle, which is focusing on edutainment, like we talk about in the in the blueprints. Edutainment mm -hmm. is 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 the key in every niche with every audience, and it works both online and offline. Nobody likes to watch a boring, dry, educational thing Do, it, think think school right who is your favorite teacher it was the teacher that was had a good time in class that made it fun to learn who was your least favorite teacher you don't remember them no. right, <laughs> no. right? Mm -hmm. so what else are you doing that is that is different and how did you begin to find your voice when you started to talk more in your videos instead of just doing the seven second pointing kind of modeling other people, what went through your head and, and, and how did you make that decision? You, you know, because this is a big thing that so many people that step, they're like, okay, I put up a video, which was an exact duplicate of somebody else's video. Okay. Yeah. Which is great. That's a great first step, but you take it to the next level when you, when, when your audience begins to actually hear you talking about it, Mm -hmm. You instantly go up like 50,000 levels in terms of your authority and your trustworthiness. How did, how did you take that step? You know, just being in it, you realize the struggles you've had. And honestly, that once you get past that struggle and learn how to get past that struggle, that's the best content because there's other people that are starting later than you are and they haven't got to that struggle, but then when they do get to that struggle and they come across your video, then they you they help them. Yeah, they can relate to it. You help them and they trust you after that, mm -hmm. you know, and it just, you know, it feels good when, you know, someone helped us. So we're kind of returning the favor, you know, karma. We believe in karma a lot. So, you know, if we can help someone and someone helped us like it's just a circle you know yeah. so the the more you're in it the more content ideas you're gonna have mm -hmm. because things are gonna happen and it's just you, you'll be like you know what i can make a video about that i really struggled with this so now i can make a video now that i know what to do you know mm -hmm. mm. yeah it's it's really as you know it's really getting comfortable turning your life and little moments in your life into teachable moments or 
little moments from other people's lives and telling those stories. How have you all used your story and story of other people to take content to the next level? Talk to us a little bit about that transition also of using more story selling in your content. We've just recently opened up with the real full story that you guys got in the beginning. Um, gosh, what, a month and a half ago, maybe yeah. two months ago, we started opening up about our story and um, just being honest with where we are. And I feel like we, our views are good. We get emails, we get messages. Um, and I think people that we are trying to reach they are able to relate to those videos because I mean, everyone's trying to get past something. So mm -hmm. whenever you hear that someone else has gone through this, 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 and this, and they are still moving forward to find a way out, they can relate to that. And that, I mean, they look at that as inspiration mm -hmm. and that's what we want to provide people. We want to provide people the hope to whatever it is that they want to do in their future, that they have an ability to put in the work, move forward and um, go for whatever it is they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys weren't sharing what you shared with us about the partner and the bad experience and all that at mm -hmm. first. Eddie, what's mm -hmm. coming up for you right now? It's, it's <laughs> kind of one of those things. I think, Everybody has that story, but you're like, oh, I'll share it when we start doing better, you know, and, and and for whatever reason, you feel like when you're doing better, you can share those those sad moments or whatever. But I encourage people to share it at the beginning because those are the stories for one. It's you for two it's going to relate to someone and you will get there faster because people relate to you. And, you know, it, it really now that we've started talking about it more in the videos and stuff, I feel better about it, you know, because before nobody really knew about it and anything, you know, just our close family, you know, but mm -hmm. I feel better talking about it. And of course, I never mentioned the business. I never mentioned my business partner's name, you know, but I do tell the story. And you know what? The other day I found out my business partner saw, saw one of the videos. And I had actually thanked my business partner for it happening because we wouldn't have found affiliate <laughs> marketing. But now my business partner knows how I feel about it. And I wasn't being cussing or yelling or mad or anything like that. But it feels better, you know, now that I know that they know that I know because I never even told them. I just kind of walked away. Wow. I think they may have thought I knew why I was walking away. But now they know for sure I know everything, you know, and I, I, I literally didn't have a conversation about it with that business partner because I, it was a mute point. I, I was done anyways. Why even go down that road? Why have more tension? We were ready to just move on and do everything happens for a reason. There, there's a reason this is happening and it's our time to just move on. So wow. that's how we did it. <laughs> that's pow, man. I'm just letting that sink in for a second. <laughs> that, that's really something. That's really yeah. something, both of you. I mean, this is a real story of grace and professionalism. It really is. Thank you. And thank I, you. I'd like you guys to to take that in because I'm I'm really, really impressed by that, that you didn't. And there's I'm learning right now. I'm mm -hmm. learning from from how you handled that. Thank you for sharing that, because every single day I'm faced with situations that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> piss me off that, you know, yeah. um, people are are maybe being dishonest or even stealing or um, you know, uh, you, you know, how many, there's not a lot of days that go by where we can't find somebody who wronged us in some way, even if it was cut us off in traffic, you know what I mean? Um, or we find out they were gossiping about us or we, you know, there's not a lot of days that go by where that doesn't happen. And so often we really give so much of our energy away to those situations and it only, I, I can't ever tell how it affects somebody else because I'm not inside their body. But what I can tell you from experience is how it affects me. It's mm -hmm. draining. It's, it, it doesn't usually do anything except cause more damage 
to yeah. them. Sure, if I'm angry, I'm usually going to cause damage. I'm usually going to say something hurtful, right? But it also hurts me. It hurts my self-esteem. It hurts my confidence. What what else is coming up for you right now, Eddie? So it reminds me of a video I saw of a glass of water, okay? The glass of water, it was all clear, and then someone throws some dirt in it, and someone throws some more dirt in it, and the person gets a fork, and they're like, I'm going to clean this water. I'm going to take out all the dirt, focusing on getting all the dirt out. Get the dirt out. You're not going to get all the dirt out. So what did they do next? They focused on the good. They got more water, put more good in the glass, started pouring more water in that glass. And guess what? All the dirt flew out, focusing on the good. The water pushed all the dirt out by focusing on more fresh water. That's what you need, more fresh water, not more dirt. Don't, don't dig the dirt out. Put more fresh water in. <laughs> I'm blown away right now, man. Seriously. I really am. I mean, this is this is some real, real wisdom. This is some some powerful experience that you guys are are both sharing right now. Jamie, how does it make you feel to to have gone through the situation and handled it? Do you look back on it now and and have any regrets or do you do you do you say, hey, that I really learned the way that Eddie and I handled that and the way that we're moving on, pouring more fresh water into the glass is the formula for success, but also for happiness. Mm -hmm. I, first off, I'm proud of him and just walking away. And uh, we definitely had serious conversations on um, the whole process and what we needed to do in order to get our family out of that into a better area, us mentally, as I mean, we changed so many things, you know, we put more time into work, we started reading uh, books, educational books, wealth books, whatever it is that we could reap some sort of reward from um, by reading, changing our diets. Um, we have put so much time into changing so many things to better ourselves out of this situation. Um, and really has brought us closer because I really felt a lot of support from Jamie um, when all this was happening. I was I was so nervous because of the loss of the income because we we brought in quite a good income from that business. But you know what? She was like, don't worry about it, babe. We got this. We'll, we'll figure it out. And that was all I needed right there. And it's re really brought us closer, you know, mm -hmm. where where it could have torn some people apart. It brought us closer because and that really made me feel great knowing that, hey, we're down in the trenches, but she's with me. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how hard it is, she's with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that made it honestly easier. Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, support is so crucial and um, support doesn't always mean um, action needs to be taken. Right. It's mm -hmm. just to let some, it's just to be there. Right. Yeah. It's just to be there and let somebody know that you're not going to going to abandon them. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because of X, Y, Z. Um, th this is a this is a wonderful, wonderful story. I'm so glad that you all are are sharing it more. I saw a comment um, th about, you know, sharing your scars, not your open wounds. But I also heard that mm -hmm. you say you said, Eddie, that this has been what I heard was kind of therapeutic uh, yes. mm -hmm. for you. Uh, yeah. Can you can you talk about from if there was no money involved here, what has it done for you to process out loud and share your story with the world or with your audience? Right. What has that done for you from the perspective of um, a, a therapeutic value or, or a healing value? W w not not in a not in a you know, I'm not trying to talk in in this super spiritual way i'm talking just about you know whatever it means for you i don't want to lead the question too much but what comes up for you when i say that you heard that i saw the comment about sharing your scars uh not your open wounds and you know what what guidance would you would you give people on on how to begin to open up and actually not only benefit their audience but also gain some therapeutic value from sharing your stories 
Um, well, I would say for us, it, it's still an open wound because this was May, you know, <laughs> when this was when it was finalized. Yeah, oh, I this mean, year. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Started in we we started affiliate marketing in April, though. Mm -hmm. um, we we kind of saw the signs, you know, but it was one of those businesses where, uh, well, I was coaching and I had kids involved and stuff, so. Even though I knew I was done, I still fulfilled my responsibilities. Um, so we kind of had a grace period of we knew we were walking away, but we had to, you know, finish out our obligations for the kids sake, you know. And so um, right now it's still kind of an open wound for us, um, you know, but uh, I think it, it is helping turn into a scar faster by talking mm -hmm. about it um, because, it, you know, when I grew up, it was one of those things where, you know, we don't talk about bad things. We just kind of sweep everything under the rug and all that stuff. And, you know, I guess because I'm a Gen X, you know, and an 80s kid, you know, and that's kind of how things were. But, you know, as I grow up, I find out that, you know, it's OK to talk. And I've found online I relate to a lot of the people that do share, you know, the struggles, you know, because, you know, Hollywood's all fake, you know, and everybody's glim, glab, you know, this, that, whatever is everything's perfect, you know, and mm -hmm. that comes off nowadays more as fake than the people just sharing the bad, you know, and back when I grew up, it was, you don't share the bad, you know, yeah. but so I honestly, I've never shared the bad, you know, and still a little bit scared to share the bad, but Sure. I'm liking it. Honestly, it's new to me and it is helping get us through it faster, like way better than I thought it ever would. Jamie, how about you? I feel like there's a sense of relief to be able to talk about it, mm -hmm. not just so that everybody knows what happened, but it just feels good. It's like a weight's lifted off your shoulders. It's not mm -hmm. like, um, not like we're hiding anything. Yeah. We're not hiding anything. We're not doing anything like that. You, it just feels like a sense of relief to be able to talk about it and to discuss it. And yeah. we don't even need like responses back from people. Um, it's not about that. It's just like, yeah. this is what happened to us. This is, these are the steps that we've taken and it's working and it feels good and everything just feels right. And if anybody can learn from our experience, that's a win. By talking about it, 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 it helps someone else. That was a win for us and why we talk about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's that really is the whole core of whenever I, I've heard of somebody sharing um, their story. For me, it was the same way. I was so in, like apprehensive about sharing my story of addiction and recovery so apprehensive i mean like i thought people were going to once they heard that i was a former you know homeless junkie who the hell was going to want to listen to me you know what i mean it's like these are the I, I in my growing up who i ended up being in my early 20s was the like you know, the, the derelicts, like the people who are the losers in life. Right. And I would imagine that we can all go there, right. If we feel like we got taken advantage of, or we got victimized in some way, or we have an addiction that took us to like, we have a, a disease addiction, I believe is a disease, something yeah. that we can't, we can't, we can't do anything about and accept choose to, you know, we can't, we're not responsible for it. We're only responsible for our recovery. All of these things are, 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 are things that I grew up also seeing swept under the rug. Nobody talked about them. Um, it was all about image management, right? And, and that's how my parents grew up too. I mean, it was, what goes on in this house stays in this house. You know yeah. what I mean? What goes Never. on? I mean, if I, if I, if I hit, you know, dad hits mom or so, you know, somebody gets drunk and passes out or, 
some, you know what I mean? Like all the things, right? All the shit that so many of us, you know, uh, somebody did this or somebody did that, or, you know, just all the shit that, that, that happens. Human beings make mistakes. You know, people, people hurt people. And there's always a victim on the other side of that. What about if you're the one who hurt somebody? How do you get, how do you, how do you get over that? You know, there's, there's so many different, being a human being is complex, but the solution is always so simple and it's to get honest and yeah. to start processing that and develop some self-awareness. And most importantly, this is the most important thing. It doesn't matter what side of the table we're on, whether we're the victim or the victimizer, it's all about learning something from it. That's all life. That's what I've learned about life. Yeah. Nobody ever does anything perfectly. And we all oftentimes trade places being the victim or the victimizer, right? I mean, look, nobody's a saint, right? Yeah. But if we can walk away from a situation and learn something from it, that's how we prevent those situations from happening again. And as you said, that's how we help other people to prevent those same situations. So how has it felt to have the feedback that I know you guys are getting from your audience to, 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 to celebrate you, what you've gone through, what you've overcome? How has that affected you? It's good, but one thing I want to say is that I heard one of your talks where you said one of the things you would ask your counselors and is uh, what drugs have you done, you know, <laughs> and and it helps you, you know, because if you know someone has struggled with something and they got past it, you can learn more from that person than someone that has never had the struggle, you know. And I used to think it was the opposite. I used to think that you you were better off learning from someone that never had an addiction than someone that did have an addiction. Now I hundred percent that has flipped for me, you know? So, and it's the same thing in affiliate marketing, you know, people are like, well, that person is always done good. That person always had money, you know? So they're at a disadvantage for some people because someone don't want to learn from someone that it came easy for, you know, because it's not going to come easy for most of the people. So the people that did struggle and got through it, those are the ones that most people are going to relate to and and learn from and follow in my eyes. You know, so you you may think it's a disadvantage that you're struggling, but in reality, you can make that your strength and your advantage. Yeah. Powerful comments coming in. Kevin says, getting over hurting others like Apostle Paul by helping others. Now, whether you're religious or not, that makes sense, right? It's like, even if some of you, some of us, me, I am that person, I have to get over the hurt that I've caused other people. How do I get over that, right? I, I get over it by helping people. I get over it by being of service. I mean, that is ultimately the way that I've Pro- progressed in my recovery over the past 15 years, not just recovering from drugs and alcohol, but recovering from all of the shit that life throws at you. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. immediately getting into service. It was first by picking up cigarette butts in treatment centers. It was yeah. then by going to meetings and picking up chairs. It was then by getting on the internet and starting to share my story. Well, first it was going into treatment centers and actually sharing my story. That was the yeah. very first place that I ever shared my story. But then the first time I shared my story on a webinar, I tell this story and I closed the dang computer immediately and thought, oh, my God, I just ruined my life. And then I <laughs> came back and everybody was like, oh, my God, that was so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing. And I actually had sales come in because people felt like they knew me more because I I shared more of my stuff and my intention and, and the reason why I was doing things and just stories sell, not capitalizing on situations. It's just, it's my damn story. I can do whatever the hell I want with it, right? Yeah. It's my freaking yeah. story, right? Yes, yes. You know, so when I started to share that, that was when I became of service to the whole world, right? Not to every single person because every person's not interested in hearing it, right? But to those who were ready and those who wanted to listen and who were also interested in the same things that I was interested in, I started out... Um, 
showing network marketers how to generate leads online because I was running around chasing friends and family, putting magnets on my truck and signs <laughs> in my yard. Never got a friggin' single sale from it, right? So at first I came online and I was like, hey, look, I'm a freaking struggle. I was a struggling network marketer, right? I was putting magnets on. Now I'm generating <laughs> leads online. Hadn't yet made a single sale, but I had generated a few leads online. And I said, hey, would you like me to show you how to generate a few leads online? And then I got a little bit more courage to share a little bit more about myself. I was listening to a guy named Jeffrey Combs share his alcoholic recovery story. One day when I was walking my dog, getting ready to get on that live webinar. Back when I started, we didn't have lives on social media. We had to do a go-to webinar and invite people to it. That was one of those webinars where hardly anybody came, right? There was many where people didn't come, but I would share anyways, and it would help me to get more comfortable with the words coming out of my mouth, right? Because sometimes yeah. you can feel that frog in your throat, right? And it's like... I don't, I don't know if I can actually say this, but then when it, when you say it, it's like, you know what? That wasn't that bad. And like Jamie, you said, it actually is a weight off of your shoulder when you begin to turn your struggles into your strengths and start getting creative and turning your mess into a message. Yes. And that is the epitome of every great marketing message is that you're talking about a problem, right? Somebody has a problem. You had a problem. And this is how or, or other clients of yours had the same problem. And this is how they overcame it. And the more detail you give about the struggle, the more your potential client is going to identify and relate and say, you know what? That's me. I can identify with that. I'm not that bad. You give yeah. people, you give people, you 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 let them off the hook. I'm huge about this. I'm so big about this. People that I work around and people inside of our company here and people it just in life, just let them off the hook. Don't 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 pile on to their already feelings of shame and guilt, right? Let them off the hook. Let them know it's okay. You're normal. The shit you've gone through, the feelings that you're having, you're not an alien. You're <laughs> normal to think like that. I went through the same type of shit. And when you do that, you create a bond yes. even through the internet, which is crazy. You create a bond and a trust and a connection with people to where you don't have to give a call to action in every single video. They just want to follow you. They want to do what you're doing. And I know that that's what you guys are experiencing. And that's quite frankly, I, I want to buy from you now today after you know, listening and getting to know you. I had no idea who you guys were, uh, you yeah. know, 59 minutes ago. But within 59 minutes, I'm completely in love with both of you. And that's the power of sharing honestly, sharing vulnerably. If some of you want more of an in-depth, um, you know, talk uh, and a great book to read, read Brene Brown's or listen to her audios or listen to even the cliff notes or watch videos on YouTube from Brene Brown. She wrote a great book called Daring Greatly. This came out a decade ago or more. And it was all about, you know, learning how to share your story from a leadership position and the power and the influence that you begin to have when you begin to share honestly, it 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 just it will if you're a, a CEO or a leader of a company, it will bring people closer to you. It will make people trust you more. It will make people want to listen to you more. When you sit down and say, "Hey, look, I, I don't want to talk to you as your boss right now. I don't want to treat you like you're less than me. I want to let you know that I'm willing to do your job. I've done your job before. I'm no better than you are." Right. I've gone through struggles. I've started out at the beginning in a company or whatever it is when you talk to people instead of talk down to them. And that, I think, is the power of what we feel when somebody's sharing their story and they're letting us know that they've also had those struggles like the counselor versus sitting on the other side of the table or the other side of the camera acting like they've never had a struggle before. It's hard to connect to that person. Right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, this has been really, really a wonderful way uh, for, for, for me to start my morning. And um, my final question is, what advice would you give yourself 
if you knew what you knew now back when you got started? Um, have fun with it. Don't don't be scared. Have fun with it. Everybody starts at zero. Um, nobody knows how to do affiliate marketing if they've never done affiliate marketing, you know, and um, the the more you the faster you can get the through the training and the and and learning, the faster you're going to start implementing and start seeing the results, mm -hmm. you know, but definitely just have fun with it. Awesome. And, and make it you, you know, and I, I want to say real quick that, you know, I was like, if Dave takes his hat off and throws it down, I know we're having a good conversation <laughs> with Dave. <laughs> so. Got a couple of those, brother. Well, uh, Eddie, Jamie, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's really, really appreciated. And thank you so much for being courageous enough to share those vulnerable details with us because they made a huge impact on me this morning. And also, I know our audience as well. So come back and keep me posted on your journey, okay? Awesome. Thank you we for will. the opportunity. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, my friends. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, okay bye. Bye-bye. Go and follow Eddie and Jamie, my friends, at Affiliate Power Couple over on TikTok and Instagram. Affiliate Power Couple. And continue to soak up their experience and their, um, their vulnerability and their courage to be able to get vulnerable and use their stories and use their life experience. That is a, an amazing example of how to turn your mess into your message. All right, my friends, you know what to do. Keep going through the challenge. Go through those blueprints as well and start taking action. You know what to do. Just do it, right? There's no secret. There's no back doors or side doors to success. We all got to come through the same front door. And that's what makes this so great, right? That's what makes this everybody's who, who's, who's having success is earning it through the, the action that they're taking and the courage that they're mustering up to get in front of the camera to share, to be funny, to be goofy. Everything takes courage. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the wealth that you are going to build and create is going to come from taking risks. That's what it's all about. Risk reward. And at the beginning and most likely throughout your entire career, your success, your reward is going to come from the risk that you're willing to take. And it is a risk. It is a risk to get in front of that camera. It is a risk to part with your money to invest in a course and learn something. It is a risk. It is a risk to begin to share your story. It's a risk. And there's reward, right? There's a reward for that risk. So go and take those risks. And you can take small risk at first. You don't, it's one of the reasons why we offer a $7 challenge and not a $2,500 challenge. Because we want people to come in and get their feet wet and, and have an appetizer before they, you know, risk exploding their stomach with a T-bone steak. You know, there's, there's little risk, right? Little reward. But if this is what you want to do, then jump in, jump in the deep end, jump in head first. Take a risk in life. Take a risk sharing your story. Take a risk getting in front of that camera. Take a risk. I mean, the story has been told in the past with going up, asking the girl out, except, you know, all the different things, sw taking a swing, getting out there and, and, and doing something that you've never done before. This morning was a great example of risk and reward and how powerful the reward can be the bigger the risk that you take. Meet us back here tomorrow for another episode, my friends. We'll see you then. Have a fantastic Tuesday and stay legendary. Get out of here.